doing? How are you doing? <laughs> And he's rock and rolled all night and partied every day as the front man for Kiss. And his new magazine out next year is Gene Simmons' Tongue. Gene Simmons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. Look at that already. Oh, Look at he grabs her. We had a discussion backstage. Well, you don't want to hear it. All right. First of all, I would like to uh, say I'm sorry to the uh, studio audience here for waiting. One of our guests was very late. I was having a house party. Uh, and when it happened... <laughs> what is it with being on time? Shook told me to say that. So I just... Everything cool. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to press the point, but very let, late. Let me just say this. we got to get shook. We're not going to do any we're scared of you jokes, right? We're, not right. Gonna, we're just going to talk about stuff. I'm scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, please and, do not pull that tongue yeah, out Yeah, after that tongue, I think this, this beautiful lady is scared of you as well. <laughs> well, not quite. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. One more time. Hey! Oh my God! Hey! Hey, that, that's that's pay per view. That's pay per view. That ain't. Pay me. That's pay per view. It's like a monitor lizard, isn't it? It's like, people are like, is that the Discovery Channel? Yeah. Or is that politically incorrect? Okay. Anyway, uh, here's my first question. Uh, I remember uh, during the uh, riots of '92. Remember the riots? Remember the riots? Uh, there was a lot of stores that said black owned because they put that on the store saying to the black residents of the community, look, this is black owned. You know, don't burn down our store because we treat you right. You know, we treat the black man right, black owned. But in show business, I mean, all my <laughs> friends complain about BET, Don King, you, <laughs> Russell Simmons. It just doesn't seem like, at least in show business, that when it's black owned, they treat the clients the way the clients want to be treated. They seem to, from what I hear, rob them even more. <clears throat> Mike Tyson got out of prison. He said he was broke from Don King. Uh, BET, there was that open letter in Variety. They all complained about, Don, uh, about uh, Robert Johnson. Uh, what's going on here? What's with black owned? Well, every, everybody's a little hesitant. Look. Nobody ever talks about the white guy who raped and pillaged throughout the recording industry world. You're talking about you just mean, about... Everybody yeah, talks well, about well, that well, guy. No, hold on, hold on. <laughs> there are no white-owned stores. There's none of that kind of stuff. So a bad guy is a bad guy. I don't care where he comes from or, or how he talks and what he does. The difference is that if you get caught, you do the time. A lot of guys who are in business today... <laughs> it's true. A lot of guys who are in business today simply haven't been caught. Well, I don't think it's okay. about being caught and doing anything criminal, but you said the operative <clears throat> term is they're in show business. These are business people who are making business decisions, and what they are asking is why should they be held to a different standard than their well, white okay. counterparts? Let me say this. First of all, you've got to understand this. Dealing with the music business, it's not too many record labels that is black-owned. It's because they're on a record label, you've got to own your masters, you've got to own your catalog. Russell Simmons is on, Def Jam is owned by Universal, so if they blame Russell for robbing them, they might as well blame Universal or Polygram because that's who owns it, first of all. And second of all, I mean, for well, my situation, if you look at when it was Death Row Records, yes, yeah, black owned, it was owned, but if you take the 60s, music business started in the 60s and the 50s. It never was a black record label. The minute it became a black record label, that's when everybody started saying, you're getting a messed up deal if you're on a black label. I think it's real wrong is you shouldn't have to, if you grew up in Compton and you got a, a, a gangster rap and tape in Compton, you shouldn't have to take it all the way to Beverly Hills to put it out. The minute we start putting those out, they want to say, we're robbing our own. But at the same time, you look at Death Row Records, the face, <laughs> Sorry. coming down, slow down, Sorry. it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> you know, give you two minutes, man. But Airster, Stop being stepping okay, right. Airster, Airster is a record label to own the face. The face had an a artist. Tony Braxton went bankrupt. Uh, TLC went bankrupt. Nobody said anything. 
Death Row Records have artists who was household names who never had a record out. Sure, the and nobody yeah, went but bankrupt, the but the same see, time when, uh, is a problem. Yeah, and this is the thing, it's, wait, wait, just, just to jump, just to jump, and you mentioned Don King, I mean, it, it kind of all coincides. I'm not, I'm not a Don King apologist or anything like that, but it's kind of uh, on the point that you were talking about. First of all, boxing promotion, if you take that instance, was a nasty, sleazy, low-down, dirty uh, 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 procedure long before Don King always stepped was. up into it. Always has been, always will. Don King stepped up, saw how they played the game, got in there and started playing the game better than those who had played it before him. And when then you say sudden, better, you mean that he robbed more. Well, I, I'm just saying this, and I think that... Well, Alleged, uh, perhaps, because that's perhaps, really perhaps, what but, it is. But that, that goes to the point, more. But that goes to the point that you were saying, saying, hey, would, would, judge them by the same standard. Exactly, think about hey, the art. But one of the things oh, I got to say is this. Yeah. If you take Don King and the guy said, well, I never had nothing, and Don King made me $50 million, but he robbed me out of a half a million dollars. Which, well, well, damn, I don't mind getting robbed if you robbed well, me out of yeah, half a million dollars. Oh, but if you Don made King me $50 million. Oh, yeah, but like Don King would only rob you of half yeah, a million listen, dollars. Yeah, but listen, listen. Who said you robbed But I've heard boxers say this. Look, it's so easy. I feel like I'm Don King's publicist. But it's so easy to blame things on Don King, all right? It's, it's Don King that robbed me. It's not that I have 100 cars. It's not that I got 50 hoes. Why it's are, Don King. Okay. 50 but what? You're a black comic. Why 50 are all garden the, tools. Why are okay. all the black comics? so upset about BET and the, the way they were treated on BET. You don't see them saying, yeah, oh, but Bill, it's not a, it's not a fair. Look, let's agree to two things. One is there are very few black owned businesses, good, bad or otherwise. That's that's true. Hold on. Let me just make the other point. The other point is because of that, there's going to be a lot more attention, period. Nobody ever turns around and says, you know, the president of Shearson Lehman was just indicted on so and so, and it's the white owned business and of so on. Of course they do. Yeah, no, no, no. But nobody makes a point of the race part of it. It's they just don't. sort of assumed. Come no, on. Michael Milken goes that to jail. That's they don't right. say, they don't say the white, white guy no, robbed. The white guy. Yeah. That's correct. They hold on. That. I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not upholding Milken or anybody else. If you get caught, you do the time. There are good guys and bad guys. The unfair, but, hold on, but the unfair. Uh, it's not a fair plane because there are good guys and bad guys both sides, okay? Any side. The point being, however, is because there's very few black-owned businesses, there's a lot of attention. It's not a fair plane. I don't think it's field. so much black and white in the music business, it's young and old. Because the older guys is looking at it where they start this game first, they're going to give you the same messed up deal you always have, and they're going to continue to do that. Well, not and the young deals. And, right, and the young guys looking at it, we're trying to get in this business, we're from the ghetto, we're off the block, we want to have ours, we want to do what we do. So you can't turn around and say it's, 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 it's black and white, but when it's some people just think white people's eyes is colder than black people's eyes. This yeah, is old but it, it slave is, mentality. But as far as, the, as far as that thing is concerned, it feeds off of the it's notion. It's like, like, like your show. You know, you can have a show, you can say what you want to say, and you hear. Uh, Sidney all have a show. The first time he had a fair cut on there, he was out of there. Because, you know, I can say, well, because you white, and, he's and, black. You know, it's a difference. Yeah, they, they, I mean, there's, 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 all there's a lot of different things that come into play. He canceled Arsenio because he had Farrakhan on there. No, I think, you know? I think he was probably going to get canceled <laughs> anyway. Farrakhan but I'll say this. So you know he was out of there. Look, but I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. Have, having, yeah. having been in the recording industry, look, you can get robbed by anybody, okay? The okay. recording industry in and of itself is a bad thing. I mean, you hear legends about Suge Knight. Suge Knight did this. Suge Knight did that. Should, you know, I don't. You know, I may not have a problem with with certain things that he did. I mean, I heard Vanilla Ice. I don't have a problem with that over the days. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't have a problem with that either. I, I don't have a problem say. with that at all. In fact, right. if I could hold him out of a window, you know, I would too. Would that I could. Would that I could. Yeah. But the thing about it is this: no one created these industries, be it the recording industry, the boxing promotion industry. I mean, you you know that you've done shows and stuff for years. It's a sleazy thing. I was just going to just say one thing in defense of the record industry. It is not a terrible business. It's a great business. Here's why. Good, bad, or otherwise, they give you a ton of money, a truckload of money. You never have to give it back. It's called an advance, non-recoupable against, I don't care how many records you sell or don't sell. There is no other business on the face of the planet that does that. You know, Even with Gene, they get creative true. on you. They that's get creative true. on that's, you. That's, that's true. true. They get creative on you and charge you yeah, for they, things they you should you. never be charged That's true, for. but the initial advance but also, you get. Also, what you got you to understand is, it was a thing they called distributors. You got that's who put all your all your all your CDs, all your tapes, all right. your why, stuff. Why so you got you got to have you got to have your distributors, and the distributors used to be seven. Now it's like down to four. So before you start picking on record labels and saying what the record labels doing, you got to understand what the distributors doing. It's about distributing the music, putting it in the stores. If you don't have that, what do you have? It's true. That's from, what a, from a record everything. label's point of view, if the record he's companies are so great, why are there so many lawsuits? There are people. Suing you, right? Absolutely. Now. No, sure. Isn't Snoop 
who everyone's suing uh, everybody. Well, one, one of the who? things you got was well, some of the, some of the guys is what you call you got to be educated. If you don't know how to read and write, educate is the key. Even if the kids are looking, listening, you got to know how to read. If somebody give you a contract, read it. Just don't just, you know, read, comprehend what, you, what you're signing. That's the most important thing. But see, a lot of guys think if, they, if you give them $10, they think it's a free $10. They want to go and get it. The women want to get liposuction, nose jobs, uh, ribs taken out. Titties put in, butts put in, you know. Then they want to turn around and say, that costs $100,000, why should I pay for that? Because it's you, you wanted that. The record company didn't want that, you wanted that. You wanted big boobs all your life, so you get Yeah, but by the same time. At the same time, you know, don't blame it on, once, once you get cold, don't blame it on the record company. See, one thing about it is you have your choice. Either you want the fame or you want the fortune. Some people just want to be famous. They just want to be, they just want to do a video. They just want to dance. They just want to sing. They just want to rap. You know, if you be, if you want to be on the business side of it, you could be 75 years you, that, old. No, but that's I'm fine. I'm still going to have a rock rock But, but, but by the same token, the record choice. company will also tell you that you have to pay for the packaging of the record. You have to pay for all these other mechanical costs of the record right. that have nothing to do with, with the blood, sweat, what, and tears of making the record. And that part of it isn't fair. I understand what you're saying, but by the same token, it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't work. Record, what, it depends on what record company it is. It, it, that's true, too. Every you know, record company not the same. You know, one thing you got to understand is this. I start off. From, from nowhere. I didn't start off on third base and thought I hit a triple. A lot of guys was born rich. So, you know, for his, my situation, I'm from Compton, so I had to get to the ballpark to play. And I'm so, like you. I was yeah, born so, in Israel and couldn't speak your language. Exactly. And so I had to learn got at nine coming. years of age. You're yeah, right. That everybody doesn't everybody justify was born cheating rich. cheating other people. No. Or Every, continuing a slave mentality and making other people your slaves. The Father slave Tyler, mentality. Y'all well, brung us here, right? What happened? <laughs> I said, slave mentality, they brung us here. We didn't ask to come I here. Know, now we're here. Now we want to play the like, game. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, they're always talking about the exploitation of the man. I'd well, like to I see them have, hold a press conference have, and talk have, about the exploitation. When you're trying to judge almost, them all harshly, uh, then, then you judge the then you judge you them more. I think parts. it's unfair <laughs> because it didn't begin with Don King, Barry Gordon, But maybe it got worse. Think about, no, it's absolutely not. You don't think John King? Think about Little Richard and the problems of R&B artists from the 40s and the 50s. I mean, they were cheated. What, what you have when, when people they start were. on their they careers... Were they were legally cheated. They you're right. And then today they're still legally cheated, they're, they're, but they're, they have unequal is, bargaining positions. No, you're right. Listen, I'm... There is such a thing as legality, and then there's morals and ethics. Unfortunately, but you're talking morals about and ethics are not entirely the same thing. So everybody has to do their own due diligence. Unfortunately, the more educated are going to have an, an advantage when they talk with uh, somebody who's uneducated. And if I want you to sign over the show right now where I can own all the masters, and there's nothing wrong with that, Bill. You should be able to do that, and I should be able to own everything. And, right. change and I'm sure oh. before the night's <laughs> over, you will. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> I mean, and if you sign that, it's it, called it, show business. It's a right. Right. Everybody, exactly. everybody knows the show part, but people need to learn the business, the business part. Right. God help us if not, you two ever got together. But it's not my fault. No, no, no. That's true. And one thing, one thing, one thing I'll say, one thing I will say about about the people, the the, the, the CEOs, like like a Suge Knight or like a Master P, or people such as that. I'll give them a little bit even more credit. Same. I don't do no dancing, and I don't do uh, no okay, rap. Right, we, you but made you know, right. I don't, you don't want you to put me in that right. category. Right, but what I like those guys. Right, but what I say is this: I'll give them, I'll give them a little bit more credit than maybe their white counterparts in terms of because of their street credibility they can at least reach into the street and pluck somebody out like you said you gotta you gotta do a whole lot till you even get to the dance uh, you guys like should be, be it be it master p okay. be it the cash money crew they do their thing uh, and at least they reach back they can pluck somebody up what they do after that is another what's so, thing what, what's so good what's so good about hip-hop and forest rap music you gotta understand this it's a, it's an opportunity to give more jobs if you get one rapper he gonna go get five of his homeboys and get them jobs. Five of his homeboys gonna get three of his little homeboys jobs. Before you know it, you got ten jobs. Regardless of his security, regardless of being a rollie, regardless of just hanging out with him, at least you giving out well, jobs. Well, that's what the, that's what the so Republicans that's called trickle-down economics. Right. Okay. We keep all the money, and well, what, what we drop, the little crumbs we drop, but I, I you have, can have. But I, have I mean, a when the Republicans do it, I'm, I'm gonna curious. get them. But at the, but at the, at the same time, is. You, it's, it's an art okay. also. I'm, I'm kidding. I, I, gotta, can't... I gotta make some money in my own. Sugar and I were talking just, you know. When <laughs> oh, the... I know. No, no, nothing like that. Just the basic idea that no matter what we're talking about, the guy that has the advantage is the guy that's well-educated. So record companies and artists who take the time yeah. to realize it's more than show, there's a word business that comes afterwards, right. it's not just a phrase, the right. more due diligence you do, the fairer shake you're gonna get. Can, can I ask a question? I have, I have a question. I, I, I don't interrupt. I'm, I'm curious. 
Shug, I want to ask you a question. I know the, we have Death Row Records, now it's the Row Records. Everybody's interested in what you're going to do next. We want to, people want to know who you're going to sign. I have a suggestion. Me? No, I suggest <laughs> your, next, no your next rap business. sensation. Your next rap sensation could be ex-president Bill Clinton. Uh, you know, I like, yes. I like yeah, Bill, I, you know, Bill in that Pippin. No, you know? no, he has all you the know, qualifications. Hey, He's a thing, wigger. One thing about Bill, we got two things in common. You know, we both like cigars. I love smoking cigars. And we do that other little thing. That I, no, no, sure. right. The thing is, we know he's we, we smoke weed. Me and you or you and Bill? No, no, me and you. Not uh, me and you, but oh, I don't oh, get out like that. It's cool, but you know, you know what I mean? No, I always felt that Clinton had all the qualifications. Baby. <laughs> he, we know he smokes weed. All right? He loves skanky white women on the side. Right? We know that. Right? He wants to move up to Harlem. He's always in trouble with the law, right? I, he's prepackaged. He mean, can be the old, dirty, white I, bastard. Oh, Bill is your black <laughs> Bill is our first black president. All right. Sign him, Shug, before it's too late. I, I know what your uh, other artists were like. I know what you used to do. And I've asked this question before on the show. What happened to the old happy hip hop? You know, the throw your arms in the air. How did, what did that, what did that they mean? Still, they still throw their arms in the air. They just tell them to throw them up, raise them up with a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the no, same no. I, mean, I don't, you know what? I don't buy how did, how did, how did Kid and Play get to be Assault and Battery? Where did that, I mean. <laughs> You know what, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with, I, I think that even oh, in time, no, no, wait, wait, listen, this is what I'm saying. I think that in certain times, just like, just like other forms of music, music evolves, certain things dominated a certain time. If you're talking about the early to mid-90s gangster rap rule that dominated, but even within that, the, one of the biggest records of that time was Whoop, There It Is. If you look at all the acts that are at the top of the charts right now, <laughs> look at them. Was. Well, but no, right yeah. now, but not, <laughs> look who's on the top of the charts right, right now. Lil Bow Wow, but Lil you... Romeo, Nelly, Missy. Puffy. Puffy ain't hard. Yeah, we know, know that. Okay. Right? Hmm. <laughs> All right. Now, so where... Uh, right. Yeah, well, but, you know, the, at Gangsta Rap been in prison for about five years, you yeah. know, but now it's a, diff it's a different era. I think there's nothing wrong with Gangsta Rap because of the simple fact that the guys are telling about what's going on in the ghetto. But see, a lot of these vets who used to be Gangsta Rappers can't go to the ghetto anymore. You got guys who are talking about Compton who haven't been to Compton in 12 years, so naturally it's going to be watered down a little bit. But the 18-year-olds, these kids who's still in the ghetto, they still hardcore. They're not trying to be hardcore. They're talking about what they see, what they saw, and what they've done. Can if I you want to change the music, right. you got to change the Can I just offer one thing before? Could Neil you? Diamond's at the forum in a couple of weeks. We're all there. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Right. You're down. What's our song? You're what's down. Our, what's our song? <laughs> what do you mean, what's our song? No, no, the song, uh, uh, too, Gone Too Soon. Oh, right. I played Everybody, Neil Diamond. You know, we've been, That's gay. We've been, talking gay. For, we've been talking for the longest time about black music, which is now hip-hop and so on and so forth. This is white bought music. The people that are making right. all these records go are white boys named Sven from Ohio, okay? Right. So if anybody has any problems... It was always thus. Okay, it was you, okay, always thus. So wait, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not trying to you. cut you off, but I'm cutting you off. And one of the things is this. If you take, let's like, say you take a record label like Interscope. If, if, if you take a black owned company, talking about gangster rap, talking about violence, talking about what's going on, they have a problem with that. I get, I get sued, not to pay money, just to let my guys uh, have freedom of speech. If you get a, a white rapper and, it, and he's in his own Interscope, because Interscope owns him, he can say whatever he wants to. He can talk about raping little kids, killing little baby. Talking about that man. It's no problem. Talking about that There's no problem. Right. So it's, no, so I, it's not so much about the culture sure. of it. It's about money. It's business. Sure. But Bill, to answer I your gotta, question. I got to do some oh. business in my <laughs> okay.